us as we end today's show in Seattle. Juan? Well, we end today's show in Seattle with Native American writer Jassy Ross. He, his recent article for Indian Country Today Media Network is a few notes for Native people about the presidential elections. Neither Democrat deserves our vote yet. Jossie Ross is a member of Blackfeet Nation, also the author of How to Say I Love You in Indian. Welcome to Democracy Now! Um, so, tell us, uh, what do you feel um, the candidates must address when it comes to Native Americans in this country? And your first response to the Republican presidential debate last night. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Um, Regarding the Republican presidential debate last night, um, you know, I grew up watching wrestling. <laughs> and it was very, very interesting and very reminiscent of those nights, you know, staying up late with my dad watching wrestling and the level of testosterone, the level of big talk, the level of, of threats. And it was, it was ultimately very entertaining television. And ultimately, there's a Blackfeet saying, that says, lots of thunder, no lightning. Ultimately, it's not going to make much of a difference. Donald Trump, after Tuesday, after this Super Tuesday, is going to run away with the Republican field. And they didn't do too much to alter that narrative. Um, it, it, was, it was definitely entertaining TV, and I like to watch these, you know, very professional, very, very uh, privileged men in suits fight and to lose all uh, amounts of, of dignity. That, that was kind of cool to watch. Um, Regarding the, the Democratic candidates, um, I'm, I'm obviously a, a Bernie Sanders supporter, and I've been a supporter for a long time. I, I do take heart the fact that he's from Vermont. He's from a state that doesn't have any federally recognized Indian tribes. And, and so for that, he has been on the right side of history, whether you're talking about the Oak Flats, um, you know, the, the transfer of the Oak Flats, sacred sites, and trying to stop that transfer on behalf of some of the Apache nations or, alternatively, the, um, the Keystone XL pipeline. He's been on the right side of history a lot of times. However, it's going to take more than just general, omnibus, sort of slush fund um, positions on behalf of, of um, Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton in order to garner um, a, a critical mass of the Native vote. Native people have been very clear that we want specific policy positions promises and pledges on behalf of any of these, these candidates who are going to earn our vote. And the early numbers do indicate that we have been supporting um, Bernie Sanders. In Iowa, the Meskwaki settlement has, was very, very much in favor of, of Bernie, according to the numbers at the caucus. Moreover, in Nevada, um, the, the various tribes there, the various Paiute tribes, were very much in favor of, of Bernie Sanders. However, the unveiling of, of either party's um, positions, platforms on, on Native communities. Bernie has uh, unveiled, as of this week, at the National Congress of American Indians um, mid-year conference, they unveiled a, a pretty detailed platform. And that's cool. But we want to see what the implementation of those ideas are going to be from either candidate, and to reassure that those candidates are going to, in fact, earn our votes instead of the way it has been in the past of taking those votes for granted. Well, Josh, I wanted to ask you, I, I can't say that I have watched every hour of all the many debates that have occurred uh, on both the Democratic yeah. and Republican side, but, uh, but those that I have watched, I've been struck by the total absence of any questions or discussion of the situation of uh, Native Americans in, uh, in the country. Uh, but I want to go to Florida Senator Marco Rubio last night calling Republicans the party of diversity. That was so amazing. interesting, in wasn't it? In all states tonight, there are two descendants of immigrants of Cuban origin and an African-American. We are the party of diversity, not the Democratic Party. And the second point I would make is that we have to move past this idea that somehow the Hispanic community only cares about immigration. Yes, it's an important issue, because we know and love people that have been impacted by it. But I'm going to tell you, the most powerful sentiment in the Hispanic community, as it is in every immigrant community, is the burning desire to leave your children better off than yourself. And you can only do that through free enterprise. That's what we stand for, not socialism like Bernie Sanders and increasingly Hillary Clinton. That was Marco Rubio looking around the stage and saying that the Republican Party is the party of diversity. Uh, your response, Jossie Ross. You know, 
thank you very much. That was, uh, to me, a very fascinating part of the debate. And if you think about it, he's actually on some level correct. That is, that there are two children of immigrants. There's an African man, uh, African American male that's standing on stage. There was previously an Indian American male um, that was that was also in the primaries, and there was a there was a white woman. And that is much more diversity, unfortunately, than the Democratic folks have shown on their side during the primaries. However, that sounds cool. However, there is the, the fact that those positions that are espoused by Ben Carson or, or by Michael, Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz are generally not consistent or congruent with the Hispanic population of the United States, nor of the African-American population of the United States. And so, while there has been a movement for the Republican Party to push those voices to the forefront and to show some diversity on the top end of the Republican ticket, there hasn't been that corresponding uh, invitation and willingness to have inclusiveness within the, the actual parameters of the Republican Party proper. And so, he, Marco Rubio is not incorrect in saying that, and I think it's important for the people who consider themselves to be Democrats to continue to push the Democratic Party to be more inclusive of our voices, of people of color's voices, of women's voices, of, of, of uh, the, you know, transgender, of LGBTQT, um, you know, voices. However, it is important to note, at the same time, in fairness, that the Democratic Party has been more inviting and inclusive of our voices into to the electorate body. I wanted to ask you, Jossie Ross, about Donald Trump, his relationship with casinos and casinos um, and Native Americans, if you could comment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Donald Trump, I, I happen to be one of the folks who you know, he was called into question. His Republican bona fides was, was called into question many times during this debate and many times during this campaign. I happen to believe that he's neither Republican nor a Democrat. He's a capitalist. And ultimately, he's going to do whatever is best for his bottom line and to protect his capitalist interests. If those things that he has to do to protect those capitalist interests happens to be to attack Native people and Native casinos, Native people's governance, and, and entrepreneurial spirit, as he has done in the past, well, he'll do that. If it happens to be working with Native people, he'll do that as well. And so, at best, Donald Trump is a mercenary. I don't believe that he's, a, he's, a, he's necessarily uh, expressed his racist tendencies that he does genuinely have in relationship to Native people. However, I do feel that he will throw us under the bus very quickly in exchange for some dollars. Interestingly, looking at Time magazine piece from 2011, Donald Trump's gambles don't always go as planned, especially when that gamble is gambling itself. In February 2009, Trump Entertainment Resorts filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection for the third time in a row, an extremely wow. rare feat in American business. Congratulations, Donald. <laughs> So, Jazzy Ross, as we wrap up, um, what you think people around this country should understand about the participation of Native Americans in this election of 2016? Well, I think that what we've shown in the past few elections and what we're going to continue to show is that, number one, our numbers are growing. And, and our willingness to participate, we have swung, we have swung elections on, on, on a statewide level for, uh, for national positions, um, you know, in regards to here in Washington State, um, Maria Cantwell, in regards to John Tester. And those, those particular legislators will say that very openly and have been very open about our meaning, uh, the meaning of our votes to their, to their elections. And we do have that power to impact national elections as well. In, in Nevada, had those precincts gone and had uh, Bernie Sanders, um, you know, actively courted the Native vote, I, I suspect there might have been a different outcome, because that was a very close election. The point is that, although it seems like, based upon my experience at Indian Country Today Media Network and collecting data for, for that publication, being an editor, that Native people have largely supported Bernie Sanders in this campaign, I don't think anybody can take our vote for granted. I think it is going to take a concerted effort for Democrats, who we historically vote for, to earn our vote, as opposed to just assuming that we're going to give it sight unseen, as we have in the past. 
um, there's, a, there's a younger generation that's very, very actively involved and very, very um, interested in these politics that say that you have to do something affirmatively, proactively, and progressively in order to earn the nation. Jossie vote. Ross, we want to thank you for being with us, member of the Blackfeet Nation and an editor at Indian Country Today, author of How to Say I Love You. And